Oh, and we're live again, and we're live all over the place. The Freedom Team interview series. Welcome, everybody, tuning in from all over the world. Let us know where you're joining in from. You can leave it in the comments, and we'll see it. With we, I mean myself, June Fuchs, and Jessica Lohman. I'm going to introduce you today to her, to this wonderful, sparkly human being. But before that, I want to just announce briefly what the Freedom Quest is all about, because sometimes people like you, you might join in, and you'll be like, what is this? What is the Freedom Quest? I've heard of this. This sounds interesting. So let me tell you about it. The Freedom Quest, it's, it's a quest, huh? it's a mission. And we're on the mission of veganizing over 50% of all humans on planet Earth by 2030. It's a very ambitious goal. So we really had to figure out how are we going to do that? Like, what's the most efficient way to veganize people? How can we inspire and influence people in a positive and magnetic way compared to an aggressive and frustrated way. And we figured out that a lot of us in the vegan community do struggle with inspiring our loved ones, our family, or even strangers that we talk to in outreach events. So we asked ourselves the question, what does a vegan need in order to have more impact? The answer was education. So the Freedom Quest is an online education platform offering courses that are helping you enhance and amplify your vegan impact in any way, shape, or form possible. Let me show you real quick what that looks like. Oh, and there you are, Jessica. <laughs> it shows you already earlier, like a little preview of you. <laughs> this is the website of the Freedom Quest. And some of you may have visited that already. Some of you haven't. And if you see on the top, we have free webinars, we have courses, vision, the team and the podcast. If you go over to courses or you stay on the homepage, you'll end up in the same place. You can scroll down and you can see what we're about and you can see the courses that we're offering to the members of our Freedom Quest education platform. We have a selection of courses, as you can see here, that are related to activism in any shape or form, as I said before. So we have an emotional well-being course. Uh, handling non-vegans objections course, conscious relating course. There is a course coming out, as you see in the middle here, ethical brand marketing, which is created by Jessica Lohman. We'll talk about that more in a minute. We have a course for energetic empowerment, a public speaking course, a teaching and educating course, storytelling, and the art of vegan blogging course. So those are the main courses that we are about to offer. Two of those are already on our website. Why do I say about to offer? Well, simply because the platform is currently in development. It's ready online. You can sign up. We already have a handful of beautiful vegan members on there. But the courses that are or have been shown on the website aren't all ready yet. So we're currently developing them. And today, Jessica and I will be talking a little more about that because she's developing a course for us. Two of these courses are already available online and the community platform is ready for you all, but for a discounted price. So what we decided to do this month of July, we're opening the doors to the community. We have done, I think, three weeks ago. Yeah, three, three and a half weeks ago from now. And we've welcomed members in for a discounted early bird price, which is $8.50 a month instead of $34 a month. It's a very big discount, 75%. So everybody who's watching this and who has been kind of, you know, having their eyes, maybe you've been having your eyes on the Freedom Quest and you wanted to start embarking on these courses that we're offering or become a part of our Freedom family, now is the time to do so because the discounted price that you'll receive if you sign up now, it lasts until the end of 2024. So for one and a half years, you'll pay only $8.50 instead of $34 dollars a month. And that's a really, that's a big amount of money you'll save. So anyway, that's everything I wanted to share with you. If you have any questions towards me uh, about the Freedom Quest, shoot me a DM, put it in the comments here, let me know. But now without any further ado, I do want to bring on our beautiful human soul tribe member family, gorgeous soul. I'm so in love with you, Jessica. How are you? <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you for, yeah, inviting me. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be a part of the Freedom Quest. And um, what I've seen so far in the past couple of months has been amazing. You guys are so, uh, so passionate and so um, engaged and just inspiring. It's, yeah, it's very inspiring. <laughs> well, you're part of the family. You're co-creating this inspiration drive with us. <laughs> And I remember like 
the couple of first times that we met, we, we were both talking a lot about strategy, right? Because yeah. you're setting up a company and you're building a course for the Freedom Quest, with it, which is uh, called Ethical Brand Marketing. And I want to talk to you more about that a little bit later. But I, I just want to reflect back on the first times we met and how excited we were about like strategy and optimizing the vegan community and like helping vegans ha be more effective in strategic ways and very often business related, right? Yeah. So one thing that I'm very curious about, I know a little bit of it already, but not all. And that's why this interview series are so interesting to me as well, is I would love to ask you a little bit more about like the whole beginning stages of A, your vegan journey, like how you went vegan, that transition, and then B, how it started shaping into this ethical brand marketing company of yours. Mm -hmm. So let's start with uh, how, like your, your vegan ascension yeah. awakening. Um, well, the, the, actually the journey probably started in my childhood, um, because my mom really didn't cook meat very well. It's like, so I never really <laughs> like ate it. Uh, I mean, I didn't enjoy it or, um, but let's fast forward to like 1992. I actually met someone and I went out with him and he was a vegetarian. I'm like, that's weird. Like I, I didn't know anybody else who was a vegetarian. I met him at a Grateful Dead concert. So go figure. And, um, and then one day after we broke up one day, I was like, you know what, this doesn't make any sense that I'm eating meat anyway. So then I just stopped, um, cold Turkey. <laughs> and, um, um, but there was no internet. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I had like, zero energy because what I was eating was rice aroni and pasta and that's about it. Like I wasn't eating very healthily, healthily, healthy. And um so then I started eating fish again. And then I moved to Germany in 1995. And oh that oh my <laughs> <laughs> my my in-laws just love that um, because I moved to Germany and that's a very meat and potatoes kind of place. So, um, yeah. And then in 2012, like I had already been self-employed for a couple of years and um, no, actually, no, no. I yeah. In 2013, I became self-employed. So right before then, I. Um, I decided to stop eating fish. I was like, why am I eating fish? This is just crazy. I mean, it was like, I saw a documentary. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I am so hypocritical. So then I stopped eating fish, but I was still eating cheese. I was still a lot. But then I watched a documentary. It's all about like what we see, this content that we see online, right? This documentary about how cows are skinned alive in Bangladesh for the use of leather. And I was like, okay, that's it. And then, and then, um, and then I turned vegan, but that was in like 2017. So it took, it took that five years to make that, that jump because yeah, New York part Italian from, you know, who like loves pizza, cheese was a hard thing. And I mean, you're from Switzerland, so you must yeah, have gone through maybe something uh -huh. similar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's how that um, developed. And then like in my business, when I first started, it was in 2013, I was a freelance and creative. I did voiceovers, I did copywriting, um, marketing strategies for companies, and also just a little bit of implementation, social media and stuff like that. And, um, and then that was great because I got out of the corporate world, right. To start my business. And then I could decide who I wanted to work with. And that's like, that's like a lovely feeling. That's why it's like freelancing. It's like, oh, wow, I, I can make this decision for my own, right? Myself. And, um, and so then I started to choose projects that I wanted to work with and the clients that I wanted to work with. And that was just, that was really heavenly. So, and then five years down the road, then I was like, okay, I don't really want to do the implementation anymore. Um, let other people do that. I want to just focus on strategy, strategy creation. And um, so then I just started doing that and consulting, one-to-one uh, -one consulting. And now I am transitioning uh, from the consulting. I'll still do consulting and coaching. And 
um, strategy creation, but I'm kind of transitioning now into the educational space. So now I'm going to be teaching freelancing creatives to, yeah, develop their own ethical marketing strategy. That's what my brand is all about, the non-manipulative marketing strategies and um, tactics, because it, it's, I mean, everybody's like, oh, marketing sucks and our marketing is so icky and sleazy and blah, but it's not the marketing. Marketing is only communication and getting the word out. It's the abuse of marketing. It's the manipulation of marketing. And that's what is manipulative. Um, you know, you'll see people uh, like write articles on how to use FOMO and scarcity and urgency tactics in your marketing. And like, it's just like, blah, no, because that is exactly the problem. And that is like the manipulation in marketing is responsible for over consumerism, period. Like, and so that is what I'm trying to change, trying to help change the marketing industry, the advertising industry. Uh, there are organizations like XR and um, Creatives for Climate, um, of which I'm also a member. And, you know, we're just, trying to get the marketers, the advertisers to wake up and say, hey, we have to be honest. And because like we're causing people, we're like persuading people to buy things they don't want or don't need. It's like, that's so awful. That's, that's awful for the planet. It's awful for people. Uh, you know, it causes people to have CBD, compulsive buying disorder and hoarding and all that. I mean, it's just, yeah. Um, so, so that was like, I, I had a problem with these kind of tactics in the corporate world and I just didn't know what to do with myself about that. <laughs> like I didn't know how to act. I was just like, okay, well I kind of have to do it. I mean, I, it was on low key. I didn't work for like huge corporations. I worked for very small, um, familiar, like pleasurable companies. And so I did, not use those extreme tactics, but I still saw them and I still kind of felt bad. Like, you know, even just like sending emails for to people who didn't consent. And I told my, I kept on telling my bosses, I don't want to do this. This is not right. Like I, we can't sell emails to people who didn't consent. And that was way before the GDPR. I was like, you know, 15 years before the GDPR. So, um, so yeah, I, that's how that developed. And it just, um, I just, through ethical brand marketing um, and also through writing my book, which is this, it's in yeah, show us. four languages. This is um, Lily Bowers and the Uninvited Guest. It's in German and English and Italian and Polish. Ooh. Yeah. And, um, um, so I wrote that in 2019. I'm kind of like going off in a tangent right now, but um, I wrote I that. Keep going. <laughs> I wrote that in 2019. It's a middle grade book, so for for older children, um, and it's about animal testing. So I wrote a fantasy for children about animal testing. Like who does that? I don't know how that that idea came to me. Um, it might have been in a meditation or sleeping or something, but actually what happened was that my parents died one after the other, like 2016 and then 2017, my dad died. And it was pretty dramatic, both, both of them, <laughs> very dramatic. And I was thinking like, how can I honor them? And because they gave me the gift of respecting all animals and respecting nature, we always went camping then I just decided, hey, why don't I write a book about animal issues and make it a series? And who can I write for? Ooh, children. They're very outspoken. Uh, out, that's, a, that's a wrong word to use. They are, um, they're able, like, especially children now, especially in that age, this generation is so vocal. It's amazing. Like, I mean, when I was a kid, it was like, ooh, I better, you know, if I have something to say, I better be, you know, dying before I uh, yeah. <laughs> interrupt yeah. my mom or something. I don't know. It was like so they're 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 able to express themselves so creatively and and boldly, and um, they ask critical questions, and they're also on the cusp of going to the 
um, to the supermarkets and and drugstores and buying all this stuff, right? Um, so they are the perfect, uh, yeah, age group for this for this, um, yeah, kind of uh, material, I guess. Because um, animal testing is a pretty heavy topic. So <laughs> yeah, it's very heavy. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I mean, I I, did, I don't go deep into it, but I do. I call it magical realism because there's magic in there. Um, mm. And there's also like real magical stuff. realism. Yeah, that's a real genre. I love in, that. In books. Oh, it is. It is really. Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. that. So um, yeah, it's been, it's also um, enjoyed by adults, which is pretty cool. And it was uh, shortlisted for the Lush Prize. And Lush is, I don't, do you know Lush? It's like the, the UK cosmetic brand that is like on the forefront of again of uh animal testing like anti-animal testing campaigns and so they have an a biannual every two years a lush prize that they give in different categories and mine was was alongside human society international for say ralph which was yeah a wonderful production they didn't win either i didn't win they didn't win but uh, um but a uh, um a hidden a uh, group research group who went into a an animal testing lab and got some footage and then shut them down they won so that's cool nah, well that's pretty nice as well yes yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. so yeah, yeah so that was a that was a big answer a big long answer yeah. for a short but question. you know you know what i found really interesting at some point you said or like when we were talking more about the marketing and manipulative marketing and how you don't resonate with that and like same for me i'm like oh vomit vomit comes up yes. um but then at the same time you said like there's a lot of like ethical people out there uh vegans out there that are working in marketing and that are offering their marketing expertise and services to xyz companies mm -hmm. and like I, in my mind i all of a sudden realized whoa like the way i realized my responsibility with not consuming animal products it's the same with not contributing to any companies or any any you know businesses in, in any shape or form that are supportive of that yeah. and manipulative marketing is like for me it's a very anti vegan type of you know or let's call it more and and non ethical right yeah. An ethical type of work to do and so i was like i i love the moment where you said you transitioned and you started choosing who you want to work for because there is more and more vegan companies out there there's more and more demand for marketing strategies like the ethical based and and you know just humane yeah. <laughs> humane marketing strategies versus manipulative like buy this buy that no like mm -hmm. invite you like this is actually for you check it out this is beautiful stuff yeah. like that and yeah, my mind just went into another switch mode of like, ooh, I really want to yell out there. Hey, yo, every everybody mark every every marketer out there, you you've got options too. Yes. And that really ties into what you and I, and furthermore, the Freedom Quest is so much about is like find your find your way of bringing veganism into what you already can do and are doing, right? Yeah. If you're a marketer or a social media expert and stuff, you can use that and leverage off of that. You can really amplify your impact through using that. And I think that's something that the whole vegan community just didn't really get yet on a bigger scale. Like yeah. there were some geniuses out there, you know, that they're developing stuff that are just smart, strategic, ethical, and yeah. pro vegan. Yeah. But most of them are still like, I'm not an activist because I'm not going to do outreach or I'm not an activist because I'm not going to take part in demonstrations. And <laughs> little do most of us know that actually the work that we do every single day has such a strong ripple effect on, you know, the impact that we're having as vegans in this world. So with yeah. you using ethical brand marketing and now stepping into the role as a teacher to start and teach that, which you do as yourself, as an individual, as your own company, ethical brand marketing, but furthermore, also within the Freedom Quest, you're about to offer a course, right? Um, I would love to ask you a little bit about like, what, what have been some like questions that a lot of these people that come to you that you're now teaching, you know, like a lot of the problems that they might have been facing? Mm -hmm. um, what, what those have been just to see if some of the viewers that are checking this out right now, I see you all both, by the way, there's some on Facebook, Jasna is here, Deepak is here, hey, hey, 
and yeah. everybody else who's who's here uh, and hasn't said hi in the comments yet, put in the comments, say hello. We want to know who's here. Um, like what have been some questions of, of marketers or, you know, like creatives that do want to do more ethical based work? Yeah. Uh, one thing that I find that a lot of people have a problem with is social media. Uh, <laughs> it's just um, because there's a lot of a lot of trolling and just like negativity and all this stuff. So um, they want to know how they can they can still promote themselves without the social media. I mean, it is a tool. It is a very useful tool. Um, so, you know, but I can't, I can't say, okay, well, you just do this. Like there are so many different, different other ways to do it. I really have to like look at the company and, and dig a little bit deeper into that, into the DNA of that particular company. Uh, another thing is like, how do I niche down? I'm not just for, um, yeah, the animals. I'm also for people, like <laughs> not just for nature. Well, not just for the environment or, you know, plants or whatever. So um, and there are different ways to look at that, like niching down. That's a huge problem for some people because then they think, OK, well, I'm like saying no to other people. I'm not I'm going to lose business and whatever, when in reality, it makes life easier, especially when you're first starting out like um, if you can clearly and specifically identify and define your your ideal clients and put that in your messaging, then you will attract those people and then you can spread out. Like once you have a, a good steady client base or a good, you know, big community, you can then like spread out a little bit. Um, it also depends upon your expertise. Like some people are so specialized that that is their niche and then they can you know, cater to different types of clients. Um, yeah, we had that case like a couple of weeks ago in a workshop because um, her her specialty was like really niche down and, um, and you know, she wanted to help more than just the people in the eco space. So um, yeah, we worked that out together um, in the workshop and also afterwards. So uh, let's see what else. Um, also not having a budget, right? If you don't have like a budget to advertise, a lot of people in this space don't like to advertise for one thing because yeah, you, who are you giving money to, right? <laughs> I won't mention any names, but we know who they are. Like it's it's so it's challenging. Like for me, even this book, like it took me a year and a half to put my book on Amazon for ethical reasons, and I was like. I don't know if I want to be on there, but if I can't put, if I don't promote my book on the world's biggest bookstore, I'm only doing myself a disservice. So that's another tip. Like we in this ethical space, like I feel like sometimes we're like too stiff and too, yeah. and just like, it's like, we got to pull that stick out of our butt talks and just kind of like loosen up a bit because otherwise we will not <laughs> reach our goals. We won't reach our financial goals. We won't reach our impact goals. And if I want anybody to have a ton of money, I want it to be all of you all of us right i mean yeah. seriously um you know that's another problem like the 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 money mindset like it's so low it's so money is evil or you know money is not um people do so such horrible things with money it's like we don't invite it in much and um and that needs to stop because that's just hurting ourselves like you know it, it hurts you if you say if you believe that money is dirty or that only, you know, the filthy rich have a lot of money and, you know, I mean, um, yeah, if any, like I said, if anybody should have money, it should be those who are responsible for it. So bring it on, bring it on. And, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll probably think of something else soon too. Cause they, there's a lot of questions that come up. <laughs> right. but like the money mindset one, we talked about that multiple times, you and I outside of, of this live stream. And um, yeah, it's really something especially to address in the vegan communities, I believe, because a lot of vegans 
and we're beautiful, we're crazy, we're quirky, we're special, we're very nature oriented often, not always, but often. Mm -hmm. And then like dissociating from everything that came out of the industrialization out of, you know, like growing empires, growing cities, um, growing business uh, in any shape or form, mm -hmm. infrastructure, and, like we kind of are like, <laughs> 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 and yes, there came a lot of terror and destruction with that, but money was never the core of that. It was always the intention, right? Mm -hmm. It was always the intention of the people. Were they in greed? Were they in anger? Were they in frustration? Did they want more as only for themselves? And I think for me, as you just said so beautifully, choosing a niche, it, reflecting on that as I, before the Freedom Quest was life coaching vegans and activists. And before that, I was life coaching. I called them change makers, people mm -hmm. that want to, you know, drive change in the world and bring positivity. Um, and choosing that, yes, it did make it easier. B, also, I understood like the, the, the way that money started flowing in terms of like who pays who and where the money goes, I can subscribe to that ethically. And that's the same way I've built this team for the Freedom Quest. I was like, y'all have to be vegan. Y'all have to, you know, have a sense of moral justice, a sense of, you know, standing up for the animals, nature, the environment and people. Um, and if you don't, you're not home in this, in this family as a, a founding member, a building community member. Um, and it made it so much easier to attract the whole team of these beautiful people like you and I. It made it so much easier. It kind of went like that. People call it yeah. manifestation, you know, that like you pulled in a team like this and you pulled in clients like that. And it's it's really all about understanding your relationship to money it has nothing to do with how other people relate to money, how right. society relates to money. Money is a language, I always say. You yeah. choose it wisely. You speak beautiful words that empower same mm -hmm. with the money. And money is a very well understood language globally. Yes. Very well understood. Probably yes. the most understood. So yeah, I love that you bring that up, you know, recreating mm -hmm. that relationship to money. It's been really important for me too, for you as well. And I think for everybody out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have to like differentiate um, the evil part of it. It's the same with marketing. It's not the marketing that's the problem. It's the manipulation. It's the people who abuse it. And, um, and that, has nothing to do with you or I or you know other people with oneself. So um, yeah, just have to be a little bit mindful about um, yeah about how we use these things, how we talk about these things, how we think about these things. Mm. Yeah. yeah. One thing I'm I'm also more curious to lean in to with you is you said before you started now stepping into the teacher role, which I want to talk about with you at the end of the live stream, but also building your company ethical brand marketing, right? I'm just going to pull up the website here <laughs> real quick because um, you have this amazing website. Oh, and I just, just drastically um, um, reduced my CO2 footprint. So this is the first time presenting it. It was just like, um switched on monday i think my web developer Ooh. Monday, so this I is the newest new 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 version since a couple yeah. of days yeah so it's like my footprint is like real low now Woohoo! oh i love that <laughs> yeah that's another thing that like a lot of companies don't talk about is like your website footprint right a lot of data on websites takes a lot of processing in the servers wherever the freak they are and that takes energy so like reducing that also reduces your eco footprint that's another type of of sustainable activism for yeah. all of those of you you know that have websites and i honestly i know a lot of people out there that have websites and that are like um we're having we're having like so many videos, we're having so much stuff on our website and you ask them, is that, is that like embedded or like linked or did you upload that? No, I uploaded it all. <gasps> but even then, even like embedding to YouTube, um, that's, they steal your data. So I got all, I got rid of all my embeds too, all my Google fonts. I'm not on Google analytics. I am data safe. I am, I am cookie free. The necessity the essential cookies are still there, but I'm um, otherwise cookie free. And so, yeah, there's a lot of things we don't think about <laughs> that are really harmful. 
to people's data and stuff. So very true. Good point, yeah. actually. Yeah. I want to talk to you more about this after this live stream. <laughs> eco, eco optimizing the website yeah. of um the Freedom Quest as well. But there is so much to discover on here. So I just want to invite everybody to have a peek at your website. It's also linked um, in the description of this live stream. So everybody who's watching, go ahead and check it out after we finish streaming. Is there anything specific on your website that you want to show us and you want to like talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about as we um, have it open right now? Oh, gosh. Uh <laughs> About so page this. is always good. Wait, let me see the about page or the impact page. Go to about and then impact your impact. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is, um, that's something that I'm still working on my giving back strategy, uh, because I was a member of B1G1, which is buy one, give one. And I was a member of 1% for the planet. And right now I'm looking for initiatives. This is also like a, a shout out journal request. <laughs> <laughs> for um, regenerative forest, marine, and agriculture initiatives. Um, and I want to support those now. Um, so up until last year, I was like the end of last year, I was a 1% for the planet uh, member. But now I want to put that money directly into the initiatives. Um, so I talk about the goals that I want to reach um which are like the sustainable development goals from the un uh which is like climate action number 13 uh and i listed like some projects that i funded for that um like for instance um one of them one project that i did was um for every newsletter subscriber i funded a day of rabies vaccinations for street dogs in nepal like, I love those stories. Isn't that beautiful? So, but that was with B1G1. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Um, but then I wanted to go more, more eco related. I mean, that was, but there weren't, they didn't have enough projects for the sustainable development goals for 13, which is climate action, 14 life below water and 15 life on land. They didn't have enough projects on that. And that's why I moved to planet for the 1% for the planet. And um, so now, because I want to, yeah, put that money directly, not into the memberships of these companies, but in, directly into the initiatives. That's why I'm looking for these regenerative initiatives in the forest, marine and agriculture field. So if anybody knows of anything, please, worldwide, please, you know, yeah, let me know because there are so many organizations and it's like kind of hard to vet them all. And that's what was good about these memberships because they did the vetting. Um, yeah, and doing this on my own, it's like, oh my God, there's so many, what do I do? Where do I start? And so, yeah, so I've just been, um, yeah, like asking around for recommendations because I think that helps when people have worked with them because I want to work like closely with them. And yeah. also like, go on volunteering, uh, vacation, stuff like that. Um, yeah, we'll see. Something this in Germany, cool. maybe, about the foresty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this, this, you know, this aligns so much, like, with the Freedom Quest. We've been talking about very similar ways of giving back and being very close to the projects or the people or the mm -hmm. communities that we can give back to. And with the Freedom Quest, it's so cool because... Just not just you and I, but like everybody is from so all over the place, we are going to be able to sponsor and support, right? 10% yeah. is our giving back um, percentage. Sponsor and support like 10% of the monthly membership fee that our members from January on will be paying are going to go back to these projects. And we plan to like hand them over in person if possible, you mm -hmm. know, to go and connect with them, to meet them, to see that project, to A, also confirm that it's, it's, you know, rightful and upright and ethical, but be yeah. also just to see what, what beauty is happening, what people are doing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. There's another question that I want to ask you, like sure. towards the end of our live stream today. And by the way, if anybody has any questions, you want some advice around marketing or something, huh? put them in the chat here, put them in the comments. Just let us know. We still have a couple of good minutes to answer if there is anything coming up. Jen is joining, I see, she hey, joined minutes ago um, on Facebook. She's watching. Love it. Um, 
when it comes to your company ethical brand marketing and the things that you're teaching, which are currently being developed in a form that we can offer it in the Freedom Quest, right? So I would love to ask you to give us a little bit of more insights as far as you can and want to in the, well, I, you know, I know what you're working on, but I know that not everybody knows. So it would be interesting for them to know if they would become a member of the Freedom Quest today, what will await them in your course ethical brand marketing? What What kind of what kind of things will they learn? How will they be able to implement this? And how will that help them become more impactful activists? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so I am creating this program um, for my own business, strategically for freelancing creatives. Um, so those are like content creators, photographers, uh, graphic designers, filmmakers, um, yeah, web designers, uh, photographers, I think I already said that, and copywriters, right? And so all the people who are actually creating content visualizations or, you know, beautiful words to try to help change behavior. And I'm trying to, um, um, yeah, help them connect with ideal clients such as eco-friendly brands, whether it's product-based or service-based, and they also have a good giving back strategy to help um, our environment, to help uh, protect animals and stuff, um, or organizations, right, NGOs and stuff. And so I am, um, yeah, helping them to, I will help you to create your own ethical marketing strategy uh, for one thing, what I found is that people, a lot of people who start their business, um, especially freelancers and creatives, they think, okay, well, I could just, I know how to post on Facebook and Instagram, right? I know how to do social media. That is my marketing strategy. I don't need to take the time to develop a strategy. However, then you run into the problems where you're just, yeah, there's this like metaphor throwing spaghetti on the wall. <laughs> And then you just don't know what's going to stick. Like, okay, I'll try that. I'll try that. And like, um, it, it causes so many problems. You don't, you just waste time. You waste time and money and, you know, time is money. And it gets frustrating because you don't get the engagement because why don't you get the engagement? Because all these channels are so focused on your advertising dollar. And <laughs> so they're not going to give you the reach that you want and yada, yada, yada. Anyway. Um, Basically, I, I had, I think of it as like a musician, a band or something. Like you don't just go and play at Madison Square Garden after, you know, buying a guitar and not knowing how to play. You have to practice and you have to practice a lot and you have to practice with your band a lot and a lot and a lot. And the same with professional athletes. You know, they have to practice so much before they get to the World Cup or to even get on a, you know, B-level team or whatever. Um, and they play for a living. Like, <laughs> so, and so they do all this planning and strategic planning and visualizations and all that before they can go out on the field. And we, like, there are so many business owners and freelancers, creatives who just, like, skip that whole process because they think it takes too much time and they just go for it and it doesn't work. And then, you know, it, it, and they get frustrated and it's just, it's really painful to see. So I just say, Hey, you have to plan for profit. You have to create a strategy and it doesn't have to be a big, you know, huge thing. You just have to know who you are. You have to know who you're, who you want to connect with, who you want to help, how you want to help them. And, and all this is based like in your brand identity. That's like branding. That's like the first step of a marketing strategy. You have to identify all this stuff. You have to know what makes you special because being vegan, that ain't it. That's not it. So if you're a vegan business and you're just a vegan, no, it's not specialized enough because there are so many popping up and that's a good thing. And the same with sustainability. Like, um, you know, people in the eco space and ethical space, they don't have to be vegan, but, you know, they just say, oh, well, we just help people doing good things in the world. Well, that means nothing like that means absolutely nothing. So you have to specialize and you have to know how to communicate and 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 write and transport all this information. So 
it's about building your brand identity. It's about um, also setting your revenue and impact goals. You have to know what you need to measure and how to measure it. Um, it's about creating your messaging and content ecosystem. It is indeed an ecosystem because there are so many different fa um, facet and facets, facets, facets. Yeah. yeah. Um, that are involved in this in your messaging. Um, it's not just putting a post on Facebook. And also you have to plan to implement because so many people have all these ideas, you know, like creatives, like we're like, oh, wow, you know, thinking about all this, this and this and this. And then all of a sudden the squirrel runs by and we're like, oh, shit, you know, the new shiny new thing. Right. So it's like it's just, <laughs> a marketing strategy will help you focus and <laughs> stay, stay in your lane. Like I'm the same way. I am so the same way. Right. Um. So stay in your lane and drive and sure you could veer off, but you have to come back, you know, or you could just veer off and continue if that's the way you want to go, but you, you have to have a plan. So, um, um, so you have to plan the implementation and then you have to do it. Like you have to set things up because a lot of people can also like do the strategy and then just, just like their business plan, just like put it away and let it collect dust and not <laughs> do it. And just like, implement do marketing on the fly you know <laughs> that's, like, that's gonna that's gonna harm you and cost you so much time and aggravation i've been there i've done it myself and i'm a marketer seriously yeah we've all done it right because we know we know how to post on facebook like, so. oh my god you should go on tiktok oh sure i'll go on tiktok yeah. for a week, Let me do a week. Cool. No, nothing came out of it i'm done with it Somebody asked me that too. Oh, I, I just don't know what to do. I, maybe I should go on TikTok. I'm like, oh, man. oh, let's let's not go there. Well, <laughs> what a question to ask at your stage of business. <laughs> maybe I should go on TikTok. <laughs> I want to be a dancer, fool. Yeah. Um. <laughs> consistency, right? Consistency, yeah. strategy, setting up consistency, and setting up support systems yeah. because we ain't robots no absolutely not we're creatives we're totally. creatives i believe almost every single vegan identifies as well as a creative in some some shape or form you know and so i subscribe to that so much and i recognize myself so much in what you're saying you know yeah. starting out my life coaching business i was like i know how to post okay so let's yeah let's post a couple of times and then i'm gonna have clients and sell high ticket items yes yeah. yes yeah. Months later, nothing yeah. happened. Yeah, one client. Yeah. yeah. Can I live? Uh, am I happy? Uh, <laughs> uh, am I changing something in the world? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so teaching yeah. strategy is it's it's so important, and the implementation is what you're saying. And I see it now how much it takes with the Freedom Quest to like let a whole team implement strategy. Um, furthermore. Before that, um, you know, doing it on your own and having some help, getting some freelancers on board. Um, and I, I'm quoting a lot of people, but like now I'm saying also from my own experience, like let people help us. <laughs> like let people be our support system. Yeah. Let freelancers help us, support us. We're saving money, even if it doesn't seem like that in the beginning. If you're putting down $100, $200, $300 for, you know, getting some designs done, they can be done really cheap by now. You can even use AI here and there to get designs done, you know, but meanwhile, so you can even do it for almost free. Um, and and like letting letting systems and other people help us. That was one of my yes. biggest learnings. Me too. I also, right? Like yes. letting people like be wing each other, especially if they're our own tribe. It's so much yes. more fun. Like this Freedom Quest thingy, like this <laughs> thingy, it's a fucking, it's a global situation. It's not a thingy. No. <laughs> But since we just started um, a couple of months ago and we launched a platform, I mean, like, this is like, it's really family. And I'm saying that to you. I'm saying that to everybody in the team and everybody who's about to join our community as a member as well. Like, you're you're becoming a part of a, a global family. And we're fucking cool. I'm telling you. We're cool. <laughs> <laughs> we're cool. And so all the cool vegans out there that want to become become more effective, more efficient and using any kind of type of style of activism, 
that can be considered activism. Activism is something that has impact, in other words. Huh? So yeah. whatever you do out there, and if it has impact, if it saves animals' lives, if it inspires people to go vegan, then you're an activist, period. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you don't have to go out on the streets. You, I mean, just the fact that you're not eating and not contributing to this industry, that's, that is activism. Um, that is activism. And, talk, and every time you go to a restaurant, you will get the why question. And if, if the people don't know, um, you will get that why question. And then that is activism when you talk about it. Um, yeah. And you request a new dish. You're like, next time when I come, can you have two more vegan dishes? That's activism. Yes. I'll yeah. bring I'll bring my friends. So I'll have more co uh, customers. That's activism. Yeah. Oh, hey, I wanted to ask you if there is anything we're leaning towards the end of our live stream. Dear viewers, watchers, listeners, if you have any questions, again, put them in the chat. I'll check it out mm -hmm. again. And is there anything else that you want to share with us before we bring closure to this little insight into your life, your work? And I, I honestly, I can't wait for your course. <laughs> I know, I know the scale of what this is going to do for the vegan community, the Freedom Quest, but furthermore, your specific course, how helpful it's going to be for a lot of vegans out there to really save more animals, help heal the planet and veganize the damn world by 2030. So um, is there anything else you want to share with them? Yes, absolutely. Um, one of my core values is collaboration. I have like forming core values, communication, connection, collaboration, and creativity. And collaboration is uh, one thing that like got me um, really confused in the corporate world <laughs> because my my bosses were like, why are you befriending the marketing director of our main um, competitor? And I'm like, because I like her. And so <laughs> I've always been <laughs> of collaboration and um, I don't understand um why people think that competition is is a bad thing it's actually a good thing uh and so you know i mean you're doing it beautifully with the freedom quest you're gathering all these people together for one cause right for the same cause and we're working together and and that's how we came together um i was just a little um a little more pessimistic in that i wanted to veganize 50 percent nate what was it 50? 50% by 2050, not 2040, 2000. <laughs> so I was a little, um, yeah, I, I needed more time. Um, <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, well, I got to join you um, because you want to do it faster. So, and even if you have a competitor work together, if you have the same goal, I mean, like, I'm in Sandra Nomoto's book. She's she's an ethical marketer and copywriter, and she wrote about me, and and one of my campaigns. And um, yeah, and I I um, designed a truck ad um, for Doctors Against Animal Testing, and she wrote about that. And you know, so we collaborated, and we're doing like similar work together. I collaborate I collaborate with my other marketing colleagues um, in the ethical space. It has to be you know, has to be in the eco space. Um, so, and, you know, it, there's just so much, there are so many organizations all over the place and they all do their own thing and it's not helping. So I would love to invite organizations to collaborate more because we could just do so much when we work together, right? I mean, alone we can like throw pebbles, but together we can seriously move mountains. Um, and another thing I wanted to say, just real short, is that, um, yeah, when we communicate with people um, as vegans, it can get pretty, <laughs> it's a heavy topic for some people, it can be triggering. Um, but I want to just remind everybody that we need to respect all animals, humans included, that um, this hate and this, these, the trolling comments and the hateful comments on social media, um, against people who aren't vegan or even against vegans who, you know, maybe have a cheat day or whatever, that, that doesn't help to cause it harms animals more. It doesn't, it just motivates people to eat more meat, eat more dairy it, or drink more dairy. It just, it doesn't help. Um, so, and no more throwing mashed potatoes on Monet paintings. Please, that does, that's not the kind of activism. It's it's negative activism, and it only causes people to get triggered and 
PO'd, like really mad. And um, so, yeah, we have to respect all animals. We're, we're animals too. We're nature too. We have to respect each other. So that's what I want to say. Mm, yes and amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jessica. Thank and it you. makes so much sense for us to practice that respect, yeah. to practice that balance and that patience. Mm. Although we know every day that some change doesn't happen on the dinner table of somebody else, it is still affecting the animals negatively. It does take impact away when we act from frustration and anger. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, speaking from a lot of own experiences here, and I bet a lot of us out there can relate to that. Yes. So I want to thank you so much, Jessica, for a being a part of our wonderful team for developing this amazing course for the Freedom Quest, for doing your work outside of the Freedom Quest, and for being a, a friend of mine, really mm -hmm. cool, beautiful friend of mine. I really love and appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love and appreciate you too. <laughs> and to everybody out there who's um, listening, who's watching, I also want to thank you on behalf of myself, of Jessica, and of the complete Freedom Quest team. If you haven't seen it yet on our website, I can show that to you once more. We have uh, a section that's called Team on the top in the menu bar. And when you go on that section, you can have a look at every single person who's in our wonderful Freedom Team, right? So we have Ale, we have Fee, Will is in there, Regula, Miriam, Fabienne, and many more, Mackenzie. And if you go on um, the button that's underneath their short biography and you click on that, it shows you an interview, same like the one that I just did with Jessica, where you get to know these people better, the kind of work that they do better, and you get to see what they are creating or how they are contributing to the Freedom Quest. So if that interests you, go ahead, check it out. Furthermore, we're hosting a free webinar series that I want to mention to everybody. Also on our website under free webinars or in the homepage, you'll find it as well. Um, you can sign yourself up to receive the invites. We're exclusively sending the invites per email. So you got to put your name and email address in there, and then you'll receive the emails to our webinars. We're hosting them almost every single weekend, right? So there might be one or two weekends a year where we don't have a webinar happening, but every single weekend there's a webinar happening, and you'll stay updated once you sign up. Also, if you sign up, you will receive the... Um, the layout of the month ahead of all the webinars that we're hosting. The next one this weekend is called Discover Your Style of Activism. Last weekend, we had um, Debating versus Arguing, hosted by Carol Dillon and William Ward, two of our trainers as well in the Freedom Quest. So there's a lot of cool stuff happening on our website completely for free. Now, if you want to really become a part of our family, that's what I mentioned in the beginning, and I want to share it with you again. If you go on our website and you click on home, which is where you land automatically, or you click on courses, you'll see the layout of the courses that we're offering and a short description of the community, right? So we're providing an online community with access to those courses designed to re revolutionize uh, vegan activism. And those courses that are already online, one of them, you see it here, is called Mental and Emotional Wellbeing, which will really help you get your patience game up and engage from a place of calm and balance, which is much, much more effective as you're talking to people online or offline. So that course is available. And the second course that's already available right now is the art of conscious relating, right? So this will help you clarify your boundaries, communicate more better, more truthfully, and be clear with your intentions. That's a lot of inner work that you're doing, but that will benefit your appearance, your your way of strategizing your business, uh, your activism and advocacy, so that will all benefit it. And as I mentioned in the beginning, and I'm mentioning again right now, if you sign up this month of July, we're gifting you with a 75%, I need to laugh because it's so much, <laughs> a 75% discount on your monthly membership fee up until the end of 2024. So if you sign up now, you'll pay only $8.50 to be a member and a part of the Freedom Family, which includes having lifetime access to the webinars that we're hosting, to the recordings of those, the courses that are currently in development, plus the two that are already ready, and our community platform, which is like a new home. It's a new, new home, right? And yeah, we welcome you in it. If you sign up today, 
you'll get it for that price. If you sign up later on, it will be $34 a month until the end of 2024 and beyond that. So you're going to save 75% if you sign up today. I've left you with the link in the description of this video. And that's all I wanted to share. I want to thank you for watching this. Share it with your friends and loved ones if you thought that was inspiring and if that helped you. And just send me and Jessica some DMs. We always love to hear from you, dear vegan friends. Sending love. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>